Hey guys, welcome back to your Fusion 360 training. I'll be your instructor and my name's Aaron. Today you're gonna to be drawing this teapot holder and you also will be given the opportunity to go into the workshop and make this with your woodworking instructor. All right, let's get started guys. Now before we start, ensure that you locate your project with your name on it, double click on it, locate the folder where you'll be saving this uh, work today and have that open ready to go. Now, um, this project will build on other salt paste tutorials that you've done and I'll be moving a little bit faster this time so you'll need to keep up. First thing we need to do guys is to save your job. Before you start, save it. Okay, so I'm gonna open a new design up the top here and click save. I'm gonna call it teapot holder. Okay, ensure you spell it like such and capital letters as well. Click save. Now, just to ensure, I wanna make sure it's going in the right spot and you can see it's starting to populate here now. Okay, here we go, guys. Uh, straight off the bat, we're gonna be creating some parameters all the way down the bottom. Click on the tab, click on the plus tab, and the first one is gonna be length. And the length will be 125 millimeters, click OK. Click the next one, this will be width. And this one here will be 42. Next parameter we're gonna cause will be thickness. So thickness will be uh, 19. Next one we're gonna create here is will be a rebate. Now the rebate will be half of 19, so it'll be 19 to slash, which means divided by two, 9.5. And it already does the mathematics for us. How cool is that? Uh, next one will be our chamfer. And our chamfer will be nine millimeters. Now, this will probably do us for now. There might be a couple of um, uh, other ones we might add. Now, one of them we might actually, actually is the octagon. We'll do that now, octagon. And the octagon, I believe, is 150 divided by two, because we'll need the radius of that when we create it, because it'll be a circumscribed um, octagon. And click OK. Here we go, guys. Gonna create a new component. Uh, cancel it there, click it at the top level type in here, this will be base one, and click OK. Righto, let's get started. We're gonna cl click on create a sketch. We're gonna click the front window now, and that's the one that lives on the red and blue plane. We're gonna come up here and sketch a line, it's something we haven't done before, so the shortcut key is L for line. L for line, watching here, guys, where I start, I'm gonna just click it right, I'm gonna snap it in the center, and drag the line over. Now, when you're dragging your lines, ensure you're dragging them, perpendicular to one another. Don't be dragging them on an angle, okay? So roughly 125, we're gonna go up to here, across, we're just gonna make like a hat looking shape. And it doesn't, don't try and get it accurate like mine. I'm just clicking it about here. We'll add some dimensions now. If remember, dimensions live in sketch and the shortcut key is D. So D for dimension. Um, we can just click that line, but I like to do this. I like to click this one, let go of the mouse, click that one, let go of the mouse, drag down, and this will be length enter, enter. Uh, for the height now, guys, so we can do this one straight off the bat here, actually. We'll do this one and this one, and this will be our rebate. Enter, enter. Now, this will be our thickness up from here. So thickness, enter, enter, and that'll be 19. Now, watch this neat little trick. I'm gonna make this one here the same as that, okay? So I can do that by just simply clicking this one holding the shift key, clicking that line, they're both selected and go collinear. And that's put that constraint on. Now if I, ch if I was to change that, so I, ch so I made it 100, you can see they both go up together, but I won't, I'll come back in. And that was called thickness. And there we have it. We're back down to where we are now. So we've got our length, we've got our thickness, we've got the height of the rebate, but what we don't have is this one in here. So D for dimension, click here, and this will be width. That'll be 42. Now we'll have to do a little mathematical sum here and we've got to work out the length of this line. It's really easy to do. D for dimension, click it and drag up. You're gonna go bracket. So that's it, hold the shift and push down the nine button. This one will be 125, okay? Subtract the width, which is 42. Close brackets, slash divided by two. And that will ensure that that rebate's smack bang in the middle. Now we could have done that with the um, parameters that we set up, but I wanted to type that in to show you. Let's check it, let's prove that I'm correct. I click the inspect button. When I click that, you can see here, 
41.5, 41.5, so I'm fine. Okay, we need to extrude that, so that's feature, and that leaves in create, if you can't remember where it is, E for extrude. E for extrude. Now notice my sketch didn't go into uh, isometric view. Just click the home button, roll the scroll we're back, click that one here, guys. So I'm going to type in here and width. And there we have it. So there's our first base. Come up to a top level, guys, and activate it at the parent level. Click save. What I want you to do now is right click on the base. Okay, so what I did, I just clicked it once, then I right clicked on it and I went copy. I go up to the top, we've done this before. Paste new, okay? And I'm just gonna leave it there, I'm gonna click okay. What I'm gonna do now, guys, I'm gonna click that once, click it twice, I'm gonna change the name of that to base two. Enter. And there's my two components there ready to go, guys. Now, let's put a joint on this, okay? So watch what I just did. I just I clicked, clicked on one and held it and dragged it out. I'm gonna click a joint. This one here, I'm just going to click that button there, joint. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to capture the position? For this one, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to capture the position. I'm going to pick the top piece first, pick the second one second, and it's going to be a rigid joint. Now, if your model didn't flip up into that orientation, you'll need to hit the flip key there. See that? Flip key. Once I flipped it, I'm going to rotate it around to 90 degrees. We have done this before, if you remember. I'm going to click OK, and there's my two pieces of timber put together nice. OK, I'm ready to start our third component now, which will be the lid. So I'm going to click Create a Component. I'm going to deselect it here. I'm going to pick it at a top level, at a parent level. I'm going to type in here, double click, type in lid, and accept it. OK. I'm going to click Create a Sketch, and I'm going to click the top of this timber, probably just this top of this timber here, guys. OK. Over here from Sketch, I'm going to create a polygon, and it's going to be a circumscribed polygon. And notice then when I go to go across, it disappears. Don't panic. I'm going to come in from the bottom and come up to it. If yours does that, just remember that little trick. I'm going to touch this bottom line until a triangle appears, and it wants to dot up like so. Then I touch this one, and the triangle appear. Now, when I bring them across, these two lines, they should line up in the centering. You see those two dotted lines? Click once and drag out. Now, here, we're going to tab across, we're going to pick eight, because a poly, as, as you know, an octagon, guys, has eight sides, all right? I'm going to tab again, and this one will here will be our octagon parameter that we typed in. Now, as we're doing this, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and show you something, guys, all right? Make sure that you keep your line not diagonally like so, but going out to the right like that. And type in octagon again so you can see it. Enter, tab, tab, enter. Alrighty, now we're going to extrude that, guys. So E for extrude. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to pick that one there that I missed, all right? Start to drag up. Type in thickness. Okay, there we have it. Right, now, we need to put the chamfer on around this side here, guys. So we're going to modify. We're going to click chamfer, okay? Now, with this chamfer tool, unfortunately, we have to select each edge, which is a bit of a pain. Some CAD programs will let you select all of them in one hit. Now, if you accidentally miss it, just cross it back off here where I just saw that again. Make sure you get these top edges as you go around. Don't miss it because you may accidentally pick one down the side, all right? So pay attention as you work your way around. You can see I've selected eight. Now in here, we want chamfer. And there's our chamfer, guys. But watch this, the lid will come off. See that? So we need to put our lid on now to seal the deal, okay? So here we go, guys. I'm just gonna move it off to the side for a second. And this time, guys, I'm gonna put a joint on and I'm gonna go capture position. I'm just gonna rotate it around. This will be a rigid joint again from there. Make sure your coin snaps to the center. You can see here the little coins wanna snap around the work, the work piece. Hold your control key and it will snap to the center. See that, guys? It will snap to the closest one to the center. There we have it. Now, click OK. Alrighty, so now guys, I'm going to activate it at the top here and I'm going to click Save. So now I want to put my imagery um, on the top face just like my real one has in here. So what I've done, I've gone to the internet and I've found an eagle, okay? I've brought the eagle into paint.net and you can see here, File Open, I'll show you how to do it. And this way I can make a transparent image so it doesn't wreck my job. So watch this, I've brought it in here. 
I'm going to click on this little wand here and click the background white and press delete so it goes all dash. I'm then going to file save it and when I save it, I'm going to save it um, as, a trans as a transparent PNG file, okay? So as you click save, you can save that. All right, now we're going to bring that in. So we click on this attach canvas. We're going to select the face, which will be the top face. We're going to select an image. And I'm going to go to my desktop where I save that. And this is my transparent eagle. And you can see it here. All right, now it's a little bit big. So I'm going to rescale that. So in the scale plane X and Y, I'm going to type in here 0 0.9, okay, which is 90%. I'm going to click Enter. And there we have it. And there's our eagle up here. Now, you may not like the look of the eagle in the isometric view. So if you want, you can come down here and right click and edit your joint. All right, and you can move that around a little bit if you wanted to. Click OK, and the eagle's moved. If you didn't want to do it that way, you can actually rotate the canvas by clicking Edit Feature, and we can rotate the canvas around as well. All right, so it's horses for courses. Now, guys, as you know, I'm forgetting one thing here, and that's putting in some, uh, some appearance. So click on Appearance, and I want to pick Pine Semi-Gloss to my two base pieces. And I'm going to put glossy to my top piece there. Alrighty, click save. And check that went into your design project, into your folder that you created. And that's the end of the tutorial, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy building this in your workshop.